This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about chemical equilibrium. In today's video, we will talk about the equilibrium conditions. Before I start this video, let me introduce to you the outline of this chapter, where I divided it into five different videos. So please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now, a system is said to be at equilibrium. This is when the concentrations of the reactants and the products do not change over time. Let's discuss the example of the reaction between carbon monoxide and water to give carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Every time carbon monoxide reacts with water to give carbon dioxide and hydrogen, also hydrogen can react with the carbon dioxide to give back water and carbon monoxide. And therefore, the concentrations of the reactants and the products at equilibrium will not change. Now, how this happens, let's discuss the concentration profile of this reaction, where we can see that at the beginning, the reaction rate between the carbon monoxide and water is way faster than the reaction rate between carbon dioxide and water. So therefore, the concentration of carbon monoxide and water will decrease over time, and the concentration of carbon dioxide and hydrogen will increase over time. Until that, the equilibrium is established and where both concentrations or all the concentrations are not changing anymore and this is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Before I continue forward, I would like to discuss with you a method on how to draw the concentration profile of any reaction. In this example, I'm taking the Haber process, which means that this is the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to give ammonia. Now, assuming that we know the initial concentrations and also we know the equilibrium concentrations. So now how can we draw a concentration profile for this reaction? The first thing that you have to do is to uh, just to choose a time at which your equilibrium will happen. So in this case, I will say this is when the equilibrium will happen. I will just represent it by a dashed line. Next, draw your equilibrium concentrations representing them by straight lines. So assuming that we know these values, so I will draw straight lines that starts from the dashed line because after equilibrium, the concentrations will not change. After that, you will be connecting the initial concentrations to these lines and therefore, this is you will end up having the following curve. Now you have to make sure that you are respecting the stoichiometry of, this re of the reaction because for every one mole of N2 consumed, three moles of H2 are consumed and two moles of NH3 are produced. So therefore, this change has to be reflected in your uh, concentration profile as you can see it with these arrows where you can see that X for N2, 2X for NH3 and 3X for H2. Now this way you have a perfect concentration profile. Now we have several factors that affect the equilibrium positions. I will just list them now and I will discuss these factors in details in uh, Le Chatelier's principal video. Now let's discuss the expression of the equilibrium constant. So consider again the reaction between carbon monoxide and water to give carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The equilibrium constant is usually expressed by the ratio between the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So therefore, K here is equal to the concentration of CO2 multiplied by concentration of H2 divided by concentration of CO multiplied by concentration of H2O. Now, in general, if I have a reaction under the following form, JA plus KB, it gives MC plus ND. Now, JK, M, and N, which are the, co the coefficients of the reaction, they will become the powers of the concentrations in the expression of the equilibrium constant. So, therefore, K is written as concentration of C to the power M times concentration of D to the power N divided by concentration of A to the power J times concentration of B to the power K. Now, let's take this following example where we have 4NH3 plus 7O2. It gives 4NO2 plus 6H2O. So therefore, the equilibrium constant expression will be concentration of NO2 to the power 4 times concentration of H2O to the power 6 divided by concentration of NH3 to the power 4 
times concentration of O2 to the power 7. Now if we go back to the example of Haber process where the uh, reaction happens between nitrogen and hydrogen to give ammonia so therefore the equilibrium constant expression will be equal to the concentration of NH3 to the power 2 divided by the concentration of N2 multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen to the power 3 now let's say for example we want to find K prime which is the equilibrium constant of the reverse reaction so for the reverse reaction the products become reactants and the reactants become product and therefore we write the expression of K prime as now the concentration of N2 multiplied by the concentration of H2 cubic divided by the concentration of NH3 squared and this is actually 1 over K so the equilibrium constant of the reverse reaction is the reciprocal of the uh, equilibrium constant of the forward reaction now another example let's say now we need to find the equilibrium constant for the reaction that will give us only one mole of ammonia so in this case we will have to divide the reaction by two to get only one mole of ammonia instead of two so therefore the reaction can be rewritten as follows half mole of N2 will react with a three and half mole of H2 to give only one mole of NH3 so therefore the equilibrium constant expression can be written as follows so we have the concentration of NH3 divided by the concentration of N2 to the power half multiplied by concentration of H2 to the power 3 over 2 now if we look carefully at this expression we can see that k double prime is equal to k to the power 1 over 2 which means if we multiply the reaction by an integer the new equilibrium constant will be the equilibrium constant to the power of this integer so if you multiply the reaction by n the new equilibrium constant will be equal to k to the power n now what happens if you want to find the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction of these two steps? So if we sum these two steps, we will get that N2 plus 2O2, it gives to NO2. Now the equilibrium constant can be uh, written as the concentration of NO2 to the power 2 divided by the concentration of N2 multiplied by the concentration of O2 squared. Now if we take the this expression and we just uh, rearrange it and we just include the concentration of NO that we have cancelled it when we sum the two equations we can see that K is going to be equal to K1 times K2 and therefore we can use the values of K1 and K2 to find the value of K so whenever we sum two or several steps to get the overall reaction the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction is going to be equal to the product of the equilibrium constant for the individual steps i hope this video was helpful to you so please like share and subscribe and i will see you next time